थैंक यू सो मच गुड इवनिंग वन एंड ऑल प्रेजेंट फॉर टूडे सेशन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एम टी सी ग्लोबल फैमिली आई एक्सटेंड ए हार्टी वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन बोर्ड फॉर टूडे सेशन एंड ए वेरी हैप्पी एंड प्रॉस्परस न्यू ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन थैंक यू सो मच टूडे वी हैव विथ अस टूडेज एक्सपर्ट colleague teacher instructor mentor facilitator in whatever name you call we have our good friend dr arun kumar behra who is an expert in this particular area and presently working as an associate professor in satyasai institute of no hard learning that's a prestigious deemed university located out of bangalore and it's a great privilege and honor to have dr arun sir with us for today's session so i request uh, dr arun sir to please take over the session from here on thank you so much sir thank you wish you happy new year welcome all all participants my my colleagues and friends uh in in today session as uh, uh, sir has uh, might have shared with you the content will be uh, dealing with uh, phonetics basic phonetics because that's a certification program and we uh, can't have uh, too many details and too many uh, the complex things and all those whatever basic is necessary for us to understand uh, the basics of phonetics to enable us to uh, express ourselves in our work spaces or in professional Uh, fields we will uh, try to cover as much as is possible i i think we have about an hour and a half uh, uh, to to do this in case we need uh, somebody needs any clarification or any uh, any any somebody has any doubt you can always uh, uh, text them or email them we will try to respond to them uh, as soon as possible uh, thank you uh, once again uh, we'll, we'll start the uh, program with a, with a basic uh, introduction of what phonetics is and why we need uh, in the first place because whenever we we attend a program or uh, be it a certification or whatever the first uh, motivation is when when professor datta send the link to you you might have had a lot of questions what is this all about why should i join what will this benefit me how how will i i uh, bank on the knowledge or the uh, information that i get from the uh, resource person uh in a in a class on a particular day and how does this certification help me uh coming from the reverse way certification uh given by the certificates given by the mtc global uh is is a very prestigious thing uh because because it has the brand name mtc global has a brand name in it and if they are offering something it's not for nothing that they are offering just for a name sake a webinar for instance when we attend a webinar for a uh, for an hour for for 2 hours and they also give us a certificate it's on like that because we are learning something we will make use of the learning and that will also stand us in good stead in in whatever field we may like to make use of this it, it may not be may not be teachers may not be uh, in, in our in in profession even in otherwise even in our daily life also we need some phonetics to to express ourselves clearly so that's that's the certification part now coming to coming to the utility or the use of use of something now anything that that we learn anything that we that we uh, get knowledge of uh, will surely uh, be of help in some way or the other they they may not be uh, directly proportionate to the to the investment that we would have made in terms of time and money or or may not be directly proportionate to the to the to other programs that we would have got somewhere else uh, but then Uh, it has uh, uh, it has benefit because it will enrich us it will make some difference uh coming coming to uh, to the basics of, of phonetics now what what exactly phonetics uh, mean what what exactly does phonetics mean phonetics is basically the the science of speech now when we speak uh, the 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 air uh, because you say you say uh, it basically involves the air from the lungs we call it pulmonic air pulmonic by the way is the uh, adjective of of lungs so the air that we eject out of the of the lungs uh, that that comes through uh, the passages 
and and then finally through the mouth. And depending on on where the blockages are or to the extent the block, block, blockages are there, either in the lips or in the in the throat or in the vocal folds or or anywhere or the tongue also we can raise and then block it or the nose we can block and then do so depending on the on the nature and the nature and the the amount of obstruction the the sounds vary and uh, each sound is unique in in every, every language not only necessarily english even in my language your language in in our vernacular languages every sound is different and and each sound is unique in the way at least in one way that when we replace that sound with something else it, it changes the meaning it changes the sound it changes the context now uh, in course of my lecture over the next 90 minutes or so i'll also give uh, lots of examples to acquaint you with them if you many of you you i am sure uh, also know as much as i do it's only my my privilege thanks to uh, professor datta's intervention that i am on the other side of the fence but all of us are teachers all of us are learners i also uh, will be learning something from you you can you will learn something from me it be a mutual learning and i i hope to uh, be richer by some knowledge, some information at the end of this this uh, session for about an hour and a half. So phonetics is derived from uh, a Greek word phone, which means uh, sound or voice. So whatever sound that we and when I say sound, it it definitely means human sounds. Now other sounds also uh, like animal sounds, for instance, some animals bark, some animals uh, chirp, some animals talk. Those are also sounds, or even machines also make sounds. But uh, we must be clear about the sounds in terms of in terms of the production of because that's a discrete set of sounds. Our sounds you can predict and and make and make sense out of that. In a machine, a sound generated by a machine or a bird or an animal, you can't predict. You can't make a make a, a rule out of that. So when when some when an animal makes some noise or some sound, you cannot assign a value to it telling oh this sound means this but in a human sound you can always assign it's consistent it's all through consistent yes if, if somebody does some sound like this it must be this so let's 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 take uh, a small example uh, let's say uh, sit and set sit sit and set set now that e and a short e sit is Somebody, we when somebody visits your home, you say sit down, please. So that is the sit. And a sit is set is a set of things, maybe or to set things in order to place things in order. So that small sound like e, for instance, or a, that makes a whole lot of difference. So phonetics is the study of human speech sounds, right? It's, it's not any sound; it's a human speech sound. These sounds and their properties, and the properties include articulated articulatory properties because they how we articulate things how we produce sounds how we pronounce words and syllables so those are included there second thing is auditory how we perceive that how we listen to a sound how we hear a sound and understand what it means in that context and that's auditory so we when we listen to a sound or a series of sounds we we perceive we, we understand that this must be dealing with this word or this context. That's the second one. So first one is articulatory, second one is auditory. And there is also the third one, acoustic. That's in the environment. So uh, there may be some disturbance, so there may be there may be some interference that also affects the, the speech or the quality of the speech, and also how it, it echoes or how it, it produces the how the sound is produced in a particular context or situation. Uh, another, another branch of this, uh, another branch dealing with the sound also is called a phonology. That's of course is concerned with the selection and organization of sounds. When you when you have a set of uh, sounds, individual independent sounds, you organize them, you put them together. So organizing them, se selecting them, putting them in a in a sequence or an order, all those things are dealt with by phonology. Uh, the in, in, in today's uh, context, of course, we will be uh, concerned uh, with, with uh, phonetics uh, as such because that's, that's, that will deal, that, that will help us understand, that will help us uh, pronounce words, or sounds, sounds or syllables or words or even, even uh, connected speech 
clearly so that how we pronounce, how each sound is generated, how those sequences of sounds are placed together to, to form a syllable or a word, how one particular sound in, a, in one context uh, differs from uh, something in a different context or means something else in a different context and all those things. So uh, I'll try to give as much information as possible in the uh, in today's session uh, because we, if we give too much, that will be overload of information that doesn't that won't help. And also, uh, also because it's a the, this this audience, as I understand, uh, belongs to a cross section of society. We don't have it's a heterogeneous class. We don't have all all the people belonging to one profession or one area or one uh, sphere. We have we have people from you know, somebody maybe teacher, somebody maybe working in the IT, somebody maybe interested in something else. So keeping in mind the the range of our audience, uh, I'll, I'll try to uh, make it as simple as possible and then give as much information as would be necessary for us. The, I, I don't want to uh, give too much information. I and, and that won't help anyway. That I I must make clear at the beginning, uh, and and also whatever would would help us in in let's say fixing our problems. Now, when we learn something, two three things must be must be taken into account. Number one, when I learn something, it, in order to learn a new thing, I also must uh, learn something that I already have learned over the years. That maybe over a, over the past six months, maybe a, in the last twenty years. So. When we learn something, in order to learn something, we must learn whatever we have learned or acquired. That's one. And also try to relearn. Once we unlearn something and learn something, and then relearning reinforces the learning. And that's how that, that helps us in fixing the problems. And once the problems are fixed, once problems are identified and then fixed, uh, our, our life becomes a little more comfortable, a little more easier. So that, okay, this this is where I, I uh, we should, this is how we should pronounce this word. This is how this this uh, in, intonation should be used so that it, it sends a, a right signal instead of, instead of making somebody upset, instead of making somebody feel hurt. And uh, this, this is the way we, we should we should express ourselves so that the other person also understands, the other person also feels what is inside my mind. Now, reading in somebody's mind is a difficult proposition. Most of us can't do. It's almost next to impossible. But then, from the from the way somebody tells, from the way somebody pronounces, from the way somebody uses the accent or the accent or rhythm or the intonation, we can at least make out to some extent what he or she intends to do. Uh, when we talk of sounds uh, in English, there are forty-four uh, sounds as opposed to as against twenty six letters of the alphabet. Uh, so that's always a discrepancy in terms of the number, which means that in no way can we predict that a particular letter will produce this particular sound. Because it's not one-on-one. -on -one. We don't have a one-on-one -on -one relation between uh, sounds, between letters of the alphabet of English and the sounds that we produce. There's always a, a huge lot of variance. Uh, one one letter may produce uh, so many sounds, or one sound may be produced by a combination of letters, or one particular letter. Uh, so uh, when we just when we decide when we talk about the sounds, there are forty four sounds in English, out of which twenty four are consonants and twenty vowels. Uh, those twenty vowels again can be broken down into two parts: one uh, diphthongs or or combination of two vowels functioning as one unit and monophthongs, which are 20 in number. Now, those monophthongs, monophthongs and uh, those are 12 in numbers. So eight, eight diphthongs and 12 monophthongs, making it 20 uh, vowels. And there are 24 consonants. 24 plus 20 becomes 44. Those sounds also can be, uh, can be divided into voice or voiceless. Now, when depending on depending on the obstruction, I was talking about the obstruction when the air comes from the lungs and then it it comes through the through the vocal force and the mouth, oral cavity, and the teeth and the and the lips. The the depending on the obstruction, we can have either vowels or 
on uh, we can have voiced or voiceless. Voice sounds are produced when the glottis is closed. When it's it's closed, so uh, the it, it comes with some force with some vibrations. Voiceless sounds come when there is no force. It's free flow. It it comes out from the uh, from the lungs freely without being obstructed. Uh, most vowels are generally voiced. They they come with some obstruction. So when we say when we pronounce a sound like e, it it comes with an obstruction and then it it generates it generates sounds. So the another way of of dividing these sounds uh, also is the place of articulation. How where it's pronounced, where the sound comes from. Bilabial is those are those sounds that come from the uh, lips, for instance. So when both the lips are pressed together and the sound presses through, the ejects through the lips. Those are bilabial sounds. And similarly, we have dental and labiodental and velar and all those. Uh, I have uh, shared with you these uh, slides and all those. So at your leisure, whenever you have, you have time, whenever you feel like, you can have a look at them. And in case you have further query, you can always get back to us. And then we will try to respond to uh, those uh, queries and, and address the uh, issue if, if uh, they, uh, they, if there are any particular issue or question, the uh, when we when we use uh, when we pronounce the sounds when any sound uh, out of any of those forty four sounds, they they come through the uh, they come from the lungs and then come through the uh, articulatory uh, mechanism and then airflow mechanism and then comes through the lips. Final final uh, release place is the lips. So, uh, and there are there are lots of uh, things in between. So we have let's say ling, uh, lungs, and then from lungs when it comes, there is there are vocal folds, and then we call vocal cords also, uh, or or Adam's apple behind Adam's apple, and then that comes through the glottis, and then the tongue, then the roof of the mouth, and then the teeth. Teeth also there are so many other parts. Tongues like you have uh, front and back and central, and then uh, blade and all those. Similarly, uh, the Teeth also, your teeth reach and the teeth and the teeth, teeth, and then finally, of course, the lips. So uh, when the when the because it involves some mechanism, because the sounds involve some mechanism, it's it's it may be necessary for us to understand uh, how the mechanism works and how they uh, they produce sound. It's let's let's understand this way. Uh, when we play a musical organ, any organ, you can you can talk of, you can think of any organ. Uh, well, including, including the violin or the guitar or the harmonium. Depending on how, how much air you release into the, let's say, harmonium, how much air you press into your release into the, into the machine and how much, how frequently you press the keys and the number of keys. How frequently, how, uh, how much, for how long, and then the pressure of the air that you release into the machine, the sounds are generated. Here also it works in the same way. Or a flute. When you when you blow air into a flute, and and then you you block those. There are holes there. You block the holes or release some, depending on the on the amount of pressure you put on those on those holes to block or release, and the amount of air that you blow into the into the flute, the tune changes. Here also speech and speech mechanism works that way. The amount of air that you release, the, the force with which you release, uh, the amount of pressure that you build at different places, the, the the manner in which you release them, they determine the sounds. So each of the sound is bound to be unique, is bound to be different from others. And and no two sounds in English, and for that matter in any language, no two sounds in English uh, are sim are identical. They may be similar, they may be close, they may sound like like there is no difference, but yes, technically there are differences. Uh, long e and short e, for instance, when you say uh, long e, it's a peel, p p e e l, banana peel, orange peel, and all those. But in a short e, it becomes pill, p i l l, pill. So that's a tablet or a capsule. Uh, so that that's that small change makes a, a hell lot of difference between two words. Peel is different from pill. If you want to give somebody a pill to 
uh, he has a headache he's he, he's complaining of headache and you want somebody to give him a, a pill in case you tell him to give a pill he will he will pick up a banana peel or or an orange peel and give him that that will not only cause trouble for the person that will also aggravate the problem of that headache or or meningitis or whatever that he has uh, similarly uh, pill and fill now if you say pill p i l l pill is a tablet or a capsule but fill is something we we fill the uh, bottle with water or fill the vehicle with petrol so there that fill is different from uh, pill so this is how uh, one sound can make a, a, can play havoc with the manner in which we use or speak okay uh, and and when we uh, speak uh, something when we produce pronounced sounds there are there are many uh, ways we there are the, the organs of speech that are involved in this in our speech in our in the manner in which we speak they are of three types one is the respiratory organs respiratory system that involves the lungs and the muscles of the chest uh, and the trachea so trachea is the windpipe one is the food pipe and the other one is the windpipe so that's in those are involved in the uh, respiratory system the second one is the phonatory system in which you have the adam's apple then you have the vocal folds and the uh, epiglottis and the third one is the articulatory system where you have how we articulate things so you involve the oral cavity the roof of the mouth when you when you open your mouth uh, that's a, a roof of the mouth kind of thing so that's the oral cavity then you have the teeth ridge so teeth ridge is this and then you have the hard palate and then the soft palate and the uvula uh, organs of the organs of the speech are also divided into two parts of active part articulators and passive articulators active articulators now tongue is the most active articulator whenever we open our mouth uh, tongue is bound to move teeth are are fixed they don't move jaws are fixed of course lower jaw moves upper jaw is fixed lower jaw is uh, lower jaw uh, moves and upper jaw with the head is always fixed so that's passive articulator lower jaw is active articulator lower lip or lower jaw and then tongue tongue is the most active articulator <coughs> and passive articulators the hard palate roof of the mouth uh, teeth ridge oral cavity and the entire thing uh, the organs of the speech when we when you talk of the uh, organs of the speech the, each of the organs again is used to uh, express is used to uh, is used to generate different kinds of sounds so bilabial sounds for instance are those which are used involving both the lips upper and the lower lips or or there are labiodental sounds where you have two sounds involved again two two parts of the two organs of the speech involved one is the lower lip and the up, uh, and the upper teeth lower lip and the upper teeth similarly we have uh, the, then the other organs of speech are like hard palate soft palate uvula glottis epiglottis and all those uh, when when we use uh, these sounds uh, give me a second please Sir, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, okay, okay. Ah, sorry. Yes, uh, sir. Yes, sir. I, yeah, I accidentally put this. <laughs> yes, sir. sir. Okay. Uh, and then when we when we generate sounds, uh, sounds are also of two types. As I told you, there are forty-four sounds. Out of those forty-four, mm -hmm. we have twenty-four consonants and twenty. vowels uh, those vowels again we have we have uh, diphthongs and monophthongs monophthongs are pure vowels uh, e and u and all those are monophthongs single single vowels so there are 12 in numbers 
there are eight diphthongs which are made up of two sounds. So A for instance as in eight or played or shout, how as in shout and all those are diphthongs. I'll give a list of that uh, in course of my uh, lecture uh, till before before we conclude, conclude today's uh, session. Uh, and, and when we uh, generate these sounds, the, a, a particular sound determines not only how, what it means. That's the first requirement anyway. When we, when we use these sounds, a, a series of sounds together to form a word, a syllable or a word or a sentence or something, we, we are sure we know that these sounds, each of these sounds together in a, in a series or in a sequence will convey or will mean this particular sound, will make this particular word. And that, that, that word in that context means something. Though, though generally one word may have several meanings and it's also possible that uh, these, uh, the, the words, that one word, the, among the lots of meanings that a particular word may have, in, in a context that word means one particular thing, that we know that. Let's say, for instance, somebody somebody is talking about uh, something like uh, something like let's say set. So, if somebody is going to buy a, a TV, they will say, "I'm going to buy a TV set." Now, their set is different. But then, when we say we are set for the class now, just before four thirty, around four twenty, uh, around two minutes to four thirty, Professor Dutta told, uh, "We are set for the class today." So. That we are ready for the class, but their TV set means the TV, the remote, then the uh, then the box, set top box, and entire thing, uh, then the cables, all those things put together is TV set. So that's how. Similarly, similarly, when we say house, house means it's a it's it's noun. So uh, they are building a house, but if you say this building houses. Okay. A guest, a guest house a or house is a, 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 a hospital. hospital. So there, it, their house is used as a verb. So depending on the context, one particular word may mean something or may, may con, uh, convey certain meaning, which are not unique, uh, which are not identical everywhere else. There are, depending on the context, depending on the situation, we know what it means and therefore, those are called collocation, of course. So one particular word means one certain thing in a context, and that's that both the listener and the speaker know that. In any communication setup, we need at least three things. One is the speaker or the or the uh, subject, sender. The other one is the receiver or who gets the message. And of course, the, the other part which is important is, uh, to, to make the communication happen is the message itself. So you have the speaker, S, then you have the uh, listener or the uh, somebody who responds to that, SR, so you have stimulus, you have response, and then of course you have the message. And when the message gets back to you, you when I say good morning or good evening to you, everybody says good evening. So that's a response. I know that everybody is now listening to me or everybody is online. So that, that, that completes the cycle, that completes the communication cycle. Similarly, when we when you pronounce a word or or we speak something, people in that context know what I mean or what I say. But in order for when you are speaking to somebody who is not a part of your system, who you are speaking to somebody in a different context, you need to tell, make it abundantly clear. Otherwise, you you might end up conveying something wrong, which they may not expect, which they may not uh, understand, which may they not. They may not understand. Now the consonants. I was talking about those twenty-four consonants. How how do we see the consonant? How are how many consonants are there? And what are they? There are twenty-four. Uh, so per, for instance, as as in pin, as in paper, as in cup, as as in uh, leap. All those are per. Similarly, per is a, a, a the other sound like basket or ball or bull or or bait. Similarly, uh, t, t as, as in time, or tape, or, or teacher, or matter, or cut. Those are, those are the sounds that, that are t. Uh, d, d, again, is, a, is something as in daily, or murder, or sudden, or, or curd, or, or lead. Those are d. Uh, so you have p, b, t, d, then k. 
ke as in kait or or kitchen or cake or or uh, uh, kin so those are those are ke then ge as in goat or god uh, or or uh, goggles or or a maggot or maggie or uh, a rogue these are all ga uh, then you have for as in as in uh, fish or fanta or father or rough or or suffer those are fa uh, v v sound as as in uh, various or or savvy or love or cave or cover or those are v then you have tha as in think or thought or or uh, 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 moth m o t h moth those are or breath p r e t h this he has a bad breath so breath but breathe is verb b r e a t h e breathe is verb so uh, the sound would be breathe or these or mother or father or brother uh, those are the then then uh, the sir sir sound would be like uh, session or or sun or uh, kiss or or, or loss los as loss los lose will be uh, will be verb l o o s e lose is adjective but we are talking of uh, sir sound so it's like sun uh, then uh, jo would be uh, this like uh, zoology or razor or puzzling or a quiz those are ja sound then uh, sha as in shirt or fish or or uh, machine or cash or shopping those are sha then ja as in uh, jara or or a pleasure pleasure or rouge those are ja uh, how would be uh, in in words like house or behave or uh, hotel hotel or hospitality those are ha uh, uh then then a uh, church church would be church can be seen in words like chart teacher or kitchen or, or fetch fetch or match those are church then ma a ma as in as in manual or summer or come or uh, lame lame and those those sounds then a uh, no no as in nectar or manage or manner or sun or a uh, skin then a uh, go sound as in king or a uh, finger or sink or sing then ya ya sound as in york or your or a uh, pure or pure tune or uh, yellow then uh, wo wo sound would be uh, found in watch watch then uh, switch sweater uh, thwart then this then ara as in uh, reject marriage uh, carry then uh, uh, then uh, last of the consonants would be l as in uh, lash lateral mill or pull or uh, uh, pull or seal s e a l seal then uh, there are 20 vowels 12 of them are monophthongs they are single single sound uh, entities so long e as in as in eve or peel or c then uh, we have short e short e as in as in uh, pin or igloo or seal s i l l seal or fish f i s h similarly a as in as in egg then a, a as in a fang or act or or apple then uh, a wa wa broad a as in bark then uh, a, a as in uh, as in uh, mob orange mob or orange then uh, then we have long o as in as in law or oath or coat c o u r t coat or c a u g s t coat that's that's also all then short u as in pull or uh, uh, full f u l l full i am full i can't eat anything now similarly uh, uh, long long u would be 
soup or pool, P O O L pool or fool, then a uh, as in cup or butt, then a uh, as, as in as in earth shirt, uh, then uh, bird, then a uh, uh, week a uh, as in pigeon meter ago about and uh, that's that's uh, those are those vowels. Then we have uh, diphthongs, eight eight of them, eight diphthongs, a as in uh, eight or made or play. Then I as in uh, shine uh, or smile. Then uh, oi as in as in spoil or or uh, loin. Then uh, o as in no or low, l o w low or slow, a boat there. Then o as in as in uh, shout. Then ear as in near or here, h e a r h e r e, both are all right. Then air as in there, t h e i r t h e r e, t h e y r e, they are. So in all those cases, we use air. And then uh, last, of course, is ua as in poor or uh, lure and uh, similar words. Then the uh, each each of each of these sounds. As we could see in the in the last uh, set of examples I gave you, uh, with with each sound and a few examples in some cases, in most cases I gave two three examples. Uh, they were they are enough to to justify that each sound is unique. Each sound is different from the other sound in some way or the other. May not be may not be uh, you, you may not be able to able to identify. The, the amount of difference that uh, one sound has from the other sound, but yes, there is definitely a difference, and we can make out with a slight effort. It doesn't. It doesn't require a lot of effort. It doesn't require. Uh, it, it doesn't require uh, you to to go through the the entire process from the scratch and then get you. It, it's okay once once we practice, once we understand, once we see the nuance of them, we know that this sound is different from the other sound, and was. If you replace one sound, that that changes the meaning of one uh, the word word in that in the place. And and if if a particular if you fail in conveying something, if you don't succeed in telling what in making the people understand what they wish to, then communication breaks down. Nobody wants that. Everybody wants whatever I say, whatever I speak. It must be acceptable to the people, and the other people at the other side must be able to understand, must be able to see what it means, must be able to understand what it means. Uh, and uh, they, we also will will see some uh, sounds uh, in terms of clusters, the syllable clusters. So when the sounds are put together. When two or three sounds are put together, they create a cluster. So let's say splash, S P L A S H. In in this word like splash, we have S S P and L. There are three consonants. That that combines that that makes one sound splur. So when you say splash, that S P L creates one unit. Or when you say sprint, S P R in the first first half the first part of the word. Those are initial clusters. They they make that SPR as one unit. Or if you say sprint, that N and T, N and T in the second half, they they make as one unit. Uh, we will see uh, how the uh, sounds, how the how the consonants are clustered together, how the how the syllables are, uh, how the sounds are are put together. To form syllables. Syllables are, by the way, syllables are the smallest unit of of language. Uh, we don't have anything below that. Individual sounds are there, but then those those are not. You cannot pronounce them as an independent uh, sound or word. Those are those are one sound. But when you say when you use uh, syllables, those are like those are smaller than or less than words. A word is broken down into is broken into syllables. So if you say pencil, pencil is made up of two syllables. Pen and sill, uh, but in a, in a word like cup, it has one syllable. 
uh, in a warlike university, you have U, then N, and then V, C, and T. So that's how we, whatever you need, that you can break down those are syllables. We'll see the syllabic structure. Or uh, it it can be uh, it it has to have a verb, it, a vowel. It has like in a sentence you have to have a vowel, a, a verb. In a syllable, syllabic structure also in a syllable also you have to have a vowel, and then you can have one or more vowels and consonants. It, you can you can have one vowel and then one consonant. You can have uh, one vowel and then two consonants before and two consonants after. But the optimal structure is. C C C V C C C C. I'll, I'll run through it quickly to to give you uh, an idea of how a syllable uh, or a syllabic structure looks like. Uh, with with only V only V structure only with V syllable, we have just a vowel. So I, for instance, uh, like uh, this I. It has one sound. It has one I is one uh, diphthong. Similarly, if you say, for instance, uh, for instance. Let's say a boat. In a in a in a word like boat, you have three syllables. You have you have one uh, consonant b, b. Then you have o. That's a diphthong again. And then at the end you have one more consonant t. So b and o and then t. So those are those are three syllables. Or in another word, for instance, you have stamps. Postage stamps. Stamps. S t. You have two syllables. Two two consonants s and t, and then you have a vowel a, and then m n t s. Those are three consonants again. So you have two consonants plus vowel, and plus three consonants. Or you have you have you may have three consonants and and then three uh, vowels, uh, one vowel and then three consonants again. In in word like let's say let's say scream. So s. S, K, and R. Those are three consonants. Then E, long E, and then M and J again. Two consonants. So that's how you can have various formations of those uh, syllabic structures. Then uh, talk of consonant clusters. When we when we talk of consonant clusters, clusters are are those things they come together. Like like when we when we buy vegetables, we have beans clusters. So a, a lot of them together as a bunch, and that's what we call cluster. Uh, we call, by the way, those are also called cluster beans. So here, clusters are they are they are organized, they are arranged together, they come together, they they are formed as one single unit. Now, when you say initial cluster in a word like let's say let's say please, please turn off your mic. So please in that word please, P and L, those are initial. Clusters, initial consonant cluster. P is a is a consonant. L is a consonant, and then of course you have E is a vowel, and then of course after that there is one more consonant. So that P and L they are initial two two clusters, initial two clusters. You you may have something like you no know, final clusters. You have let's say four four clusters final like attempts or attempts. Uh, A T T E M P T S. So. M P T S. Those are four consonants. M P T S. Attempts. He he attempts to do this several times. So attempts the M P T S. Those are four four consonants, and therefore they are final clusters because they come at the end of the word. If they come at the beginning of the word, they become initial clusters. If there are two, they become two two clusters, two initial clusters. If there are three, they are three initial clusters. If they come at the end with a two cluster, they become two final clusters. If they come at the end and there are four, we call them four final clusters. This was an example of four final clusters. Uh, well, three three clusters. Final three clusters would be something like like camps, C A M P S, M P S. Three clusters, three consonants, and that comes at the end of the word camps. So uh, th there are there are Camps set here. There are camps set here, uh, voting camps or booths or something. So let's say camp. Okay. Uh, and 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 uh, when we uh, look at the from from sounds from independent individual sounds 
vowels, consonants, diphthongs, monophthongs, all those. We, we came to clusters, we came to syllabic structure, and now let's move to word stress. Stress is an important uh, important part in in uh, in our conversation because the because the amount of stress that we put in a word the place and amount quantity two things the the manner in which we put the stress and where we put that also determines what we mean uh, and and because english is a syllable is a stress timed uh, uh, language therefore the wherever we put the stress that determines the meaning uh, so word stress refers to the relative emphasis given to a syllable to a syllable or a word. If it's a monosyllabic word, it doesn't require any. If it's a polysyllabic word, disyllabic or polysyllabic, di is two, then you have you can have two syllables, three syllables, four syllables, all those polysyllabic words. Uh, one of the one of the syllables gets most prominence. Not not all of them get equal equal uh, the prominence. Some some sound, some syllable somewhere gets more prominence, and that that deter, that shapes the the uh, line, the sentence or the word or the or the speech, the the entire construction, whatever it may be. It may have two words, it may have ten words. That determines how it's broken down, how it's divided. Mm -hmm. So uh, stress refers to the relative emphasis given to uh, a syllable or a word, and uh, it, it it's also stress is also otherwise known as accent. We call it word accent or word stress uh, because it it talks about only one word, and in that word, uh, whatever syllable, whichever syllable you have, you, one of the syllables gets accented, and and the the accent or the stress, of course, is always shown with a with a mark on the before the word on the top. There's a vertical line, small vertical line, like a like an apostrophe, like an apostrophe that comes before the word, before the syllable, and and then that that tells you that this word or this sound is, this syllable is accented or stressed. Uh, it's also, so uh, it it can a word may have a primary accent or a secondary accent. The primary accent is where it it gets the more prominence. Secondary accent, uh, of course, is marked with a with a vertical line again, but below the word, below and before the word. There, it's above the word, before the word and above it. This is before the word, below it, and that's how we uh, differentiate between the uh, syllable, between the accent, primary accent, and the secondary accent. Primary accent is on the top of the word, before the word, a vertical line, a small vertical line like a like a hyphen, like a like an apostrophe, and when it comes below the word, before the word, of course, it has to come before the sound, before the syllable. That's the uh, that's a, again vertical line, small vertical line. That's the secondary accent, uh, and the uh, primary accent, of course, makes the uh, when let's say, for instance, in a voiceless sound like p or k or all those, uh, if it comes. At the at the uh, primary accent, then they are aspirated. So we say, for instance, "fool." Now that that sounds almost like almost like "fool." There's a difference though between three sounds among three sounds, "pool," and then "fool," f-o-o-l, "fool," and the "pool" with a stress. That "pool," that that sound, that the sound that we pronounce this "pool" with a stress is between these two sounds. Though we may not be able to able to exactly uh, uh, mark the the difference, the quantum of the of the aspiration in both the sounds, but they are clear enough to give us an indication that it is it, it is aspirated, it, it is stressed, and this this sound is fool. He is a fool. We don't say uh, we don't say he is a fool. So pool, there's a swimming pool, pool. That gets aspirated, something like fool, but then the other sound is fool. He is a fool. There, the four is clear. You can make out the difference between that four, like fish, like father, the four in father and fish and and rough, or suffer or surf, and this this per aspirated per in a stressed syllable where it it takes it slightly 
it may be it comes closer to it it sounds higher than the the pa as in as in pool but lower than the fa as in father or fool so okay we will we'll see them uh, we'll see some more examples later maybe uh, and the some of the important features of stressed uh, syllables <coughs> syllables are that they are so, they are louder than the than other syllables there are there may be so many syllables in a line in a connected speech those stressed syllables are louder than you you pronounce them louder than the other sounds which are not stressed so that that sets them apart second thing is they it's they are also said on a pitch different from others the pitch also varies one is the one is the they are louder second also is the pitch varies so then the third is they uh, what do they do then how 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 do how do these uh, how does this stress word stress or word accent work so they produce a uh, longer vowel when the vowel is long they produce a longer vowel so feel similarly raise their pitch when you when you raise the pitch so pull that you raise the pitch or uh, also say the syllable louder it becomes little louder than the others so in in other case it may be slightly lower but they are in case of stressed syllable they are slightly louder than the other sounds or other syllables then uh, they they are pronounced with clarity in some of the cases you might it it may appear it may seem that we have eaten away some sounds but but in a in case of a stressed syllables they are clear so when you say say when you say a particular word some sounds which are not accented not stressed or accented they look like they they are maybe hidden somewhere they they may not be pronounced as clearly but stressed sounds have to be clearly pronounced because they are accented because they are, they are pitch is high the because the, the pitch is high there because they they are uh, pronounced with with some force with with some uh, high level of noise sound with some with some sound and uh, they create a more distinct uh, distinctive facial movement okay <clears throat> now when we use word stress there are some rules that can that can make each our business things that can make us make us uh, use the word stress uh, clearly and usefully how do they do so longer one the number one is longer so like say computer when we say uh, he bought a computer so you you say come few there are three syllables come few ter now when you say he bought a computer uh you you know that he he is putting the stress on the on the second uh, sound on the second syllable few so computer now over there that the few gets accented computer then the second one uh it because in the, in that sound if in the word you say it's it sounds that that few sounds a uh, little louder than the other sounds like come and ter so computer or uh, also the variation of pitch you can you can make out come and then few and then ter you can you can make the variation in the pitch so uh, just one second give me one small one second Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, 
when we when you use the uh, word stress in order for us to be be clear in communicating certain things putting the stress is necessary anyway because they will they will set one one uh, set of syllables or one syllable maybe one syllable or in some cases one set of syllables also of different from others uh, some some rules uh, might help us will help us in fixing the problem let's say when when uh, we use words with weak prefixes weak prefixes something like let's say above in a word like about or above or ago they are in the word like about for instance a is the first sound in that word a is a weak syllable and is a weak sound or a weak prefix now that we we don't we don't pronounce that we don't say about it's about uh, he is going to uh, he is going to uh, come about seven o'clock so that about or he is talking about uh, covaxin so they are that about b gets stressed there uh, and and in a that's that's one with the weak weak prefix this uh, or a weak prefix for instance or in a word like become for instance become b is a weak weak prefix we say be, become he he becomes the uh, she becomes the uh, youngest mayor of of uh, kerala youngest mayor of india in fact youngest mayor so uh, becomes that b uh, is a is a weak uh, vowel is a weak prefix and therefore there the k gets this stress or in ago or about a is a weak prefix and about b gets the uh, stress <coughs> i'm sorry then the second uh, rule is that in a two syllabic word disyllabic word where there are two syllables uh, in the first case it was weak syllable is your you know weak syllable or or weak uh, uh, prefix the second rule i'm talking about pertains to two syllabic words disyllabic words in disyllabic words where long vowel with a, there's a long vowel if there are two syllables and there's a long vowel then the the stress is on the syllable with the long vowel sound so let's say leader now in the in the word like leader because there's a long sound long e sound e that stress gets uh, is put on the word on the syllable la so it becomes leader or machine now in in the word machine ma is a syllable and then she is a is she is another syllable so there the second syllable gets the uh, accent so machine we don't say machine so machine so the it's, it gets the accent on the second syllable or or words ending in double e e e you one two e's two e's when words end in in uh, two e's they are generally accented on the last syllable so let's say something like agree agreement so agree because the the double the double e is a part of the syllable agree g r e e agree a r a g r e e and there it 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 puts on the it's put on the sound in the syllable g so it becomes agree or decree that the pope the pope gave the decree or the pope or the kings also used to give decrees so decrees a decree uh then words ending in t i o n like motion and and caution and all those t i o n they are generally accented on the syllable before it so let's say word like attention so attention that t i o n is a part of the second syllable tension or uh, tension so there it it is it's stressed on the sound on the word on the syllable tension so attention so he drew our attention to uh, serum institute has drawn our attention to covax covaxin so there uh, is tension similarly words ending in s i o n or c i o n they are stressed on the syllable before that so let's say pension uh, pension s i o n the syllable before that preceding that s i o n is pen p e n pen so uh, that 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 sound that gets accented pension he gets a pension pension 
Similarly, uh, words ending in IC, IC, OUS, or LOGY, like biology, biology. So LOGY, and then it it's accented on the syllable preceding that. So uh, the suffix is ology. LOGY is the word, is the sound, is the syllable, and that the sound that the suffix of that is ology. So biology. We don't say biology. We say biology or magic or so that's that's how the uh, word stress word stress is used then uh, when we change the word from one function to another let's say uh, noun to verb let's say verb noun or adjective is one group and the verb is another group same words can be used in english as different parts of speech all of us are aware of that some words are used, let's say, I gave you the example in the beginning of the lecture that, uh, let's say, something like, like chair. He chairs the meeting, there it's a verb. But I bought a chair, I bought a wheelchair, that chair is a noun. Uh, or house, house is a, is a noun, so he, he built a house for himself, that's a noun. But then this building houses a museum, so there that house is a verb. Uh, when when the word is used as a verb or something, accent is generally in the second or second syllable or something in a two syllabic word. And uh, if they are noun or adjectives, they are generally accented in the first syllable. So uh, debate, for instance, let's say let's take a small word, debate. Uh, he he took part in a debate. That's a noun, and therefore it's it's stressed on the first syllable, d debate. But uh, don't don't debate on on this issue. This is a closed chapter. Don't debate on this issue. There it's a verb, and therefore the accent is on the second syllable, debate. So debate. Don't debate on this issue. Uh, similarly, there are there are some words which also are uh, which also change the uh, the rules are changed when uh, with regard to accent, with regard to word stress. With, uh, especially uh, for words for derivatives, when you derive one word from others, let's say let's say academy. Uh, that's an English academy in Whitefield. So academy, then academic, academician. Uh, look look at the word. In in the word academy, the stress is on the ka. So academic. That's an academy in Bangalore in in Whitefield. Leadership Academy, MTC Global Leadership Academy, Leadership Institute, so academy. Then uh, he he is an academic, he is an academic, he is a popular academic. Then number three, academician. So uh, we are looking for an academician. We are looking for an academician for this job. So three, three words derived from the same root academy. There are academy, then uh, well, one is academy, academy, another is academic, another is academician. So three words with stress at different places, though they are derived from the same root. Academy is the same root. Academy is the same word that we derived it from. Similarly, in the compound words, when nouns are, when two, two words are formed as one, uh, one group of, uh, Yes, sir, uh, Professor Datta. How much? How much time do I have? Sir, still we have time. Now it's uh, five uh, forty. I think another half an hour. Ah, good. Right, sir. Then we can take a few questions. Five forty. Okay. Yeah. Ah, good, sir. Thank you. Right, sir. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay. In in compound words, so when words are are formed or made up of two two nouns. Let, let's say uh, air red, air red. The first element is accented, so air red. There are uh, the uh, there are air reds in India Pakistan borders, or in 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 other kind of compound words with with ever uh, or self, like however or himself and all those. It's always in the second, the ending, that self or ever or wherever. So however, we don't uh, we don't say. However, we say, however, or himself, he himself is to blame for this. In, in, uh, there are other compound words where uh, they are made up of something like, you know, afternoon, for instance, afternoon, 
और नहीं था आफ्टरनून और और होम मेड और होम मेड पिकल्स दे वी आर फंड ऑफ होम मेड पिकल्स सो नॉट होम मेड वी से होम मेड सो दैट्स दैट्स अनदर टाइप ऑफ कंपाउंड वर्ड्स one more one more type is when weak prefixes are there like in the abroad for instance or abroad so uh, they he he is flying abroad uh, abroad a mig mi, mirage 29 mig 29 he is flying abroad a mig 29 so abroad they are bo bo is the is the stress bo is where we stress or below uh, we don't say below we say below then inflectional suffix so when we are then words are inflex uh, words are made from uh, made by adding uh, past tense ed or or uh, third person singular number like es or even plurals or verb ing forms when we use these these particles to to words they uh, the uh, accent or the stress pattern it does not change so let's say relate he he relates so uh, i i relate something to this relate or related also same thing no no change in stress pattern or relating also there's that it doesn't change similarly derivational suffix when we use a uh, use one more part to add to a word something like en for instance past participle form so en or or maybe ess so there also it it doesn't change uh, something like let's say uh, abuse don't abuse me or uh, adjective form of that would be abusive so there also it doesn't change even though the word changes the it, this is a entirely different word abuse is one word abusive is another word but then it does not change because it it is a derivational suffix of the root word uh, abuse and therefore abuse or abusive both of them remain the same uh, okay some 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 uh, something about why why uh, word stress is is important for english of course in in other languages it may not have as much bearing especially in our uh, vernacular languages it it may not have a bearing uh, to the extent it is with english but uh, in in vernacular languages nobody uh, but we we don't normally bother about the about the stress and the accent and the and the intonation and intonation maybe to some extent yes uh, especially when it it relates to asking a question or seeking some information or dealing with an elderly person or somebody those are maybe exceptional cases but generally the sound uh and the the stress pattern and all those do not normally impact uh in our vernacular medium as it does in english the extent to which it is used in english is huge and and the impact also uh, accordingly is uh, big so let's say uh, when we when we uh, use word stress the importance also we must understand why why it's important why what happens what if somebody does not use word stress does not use the uh, accent or the stress properly or <coughs> uh, exactly or in, in an accurate manner number one of course it it results in miscommunication that's because noun and verb and all those that we discussed in the previous slides that uh, there are bound to be issues where people might people might uh, misunderstand Uh, something to be a verb or a noun and all those those are possible things uh, and and also and also the because when we make a sentence i am talking of a context i am talking of a context where you use a use words in a sentence syllables in a sentence number of syllables in a long sentence because because the the time that we take to to pronounce this syllables stressed syllables and the unstressed syllables in between they they take less time so that between two stressed syllables the the time taken between two stressed syllables should be identical should be uniform so that that's a rhythm that's a rhythm and when we when we speak something it sounds musical it sounds good it it gives the effect of english it it makes the other person feel good 
and and uh, otherwise it will be it will be like monotonous so uh, something like uh, jack and uh, jill uh, went up the hill now it, it it doesn't impact now when you say on the other hand for instance jack and jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water so irrespective of the number of sounds in between number of syllables in between you take almost similar sound almost similar time almost identical time though the time lag may may not be may not be in terms of minutes or seconds they may be fractions of seconds maybe 1 by 10 part of a second 1 by uh, 20th part of a second that's all right but then the time that we take between between two stress syllables they must be identical so that we we get a we get tune we get a rhythm we get rhythm uh, so the importance of stress in english number one native speakers rely on stress to process what they hear like when we when we hear somebody we process it it gets into our ears and then we listen to that then we process what he says then we we add context to that in what context he is telling and then make out something that okay he is talking about this he is he is, he is talking about covaxin now for instance anybody anybody is talking about let's say disease anybody who talks of a disease or a death uh initially people think okay must be must be from covid he died of covid we say no 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 it's not directly covid it's covid induced disease what i mean no heart attack how heart attack no he got a cardiac arrest because he felt that he had covid and he was not going to survive and he didn't have money to go to a hospitals and he had heard that hospitals private hospitals uh, charge exorbitantly high uh, you have to pay through your nose 15 lakh 20 lakh rupees and he didn't have that much money so in order to uh, all with all those tension and all those built up he he developed a hemorrhage and got a cardiac arrest now look from a from a simple covid death he also died of died uh, something related to covid not directly of covid but then the context is <coughs> in this case we will think we will understand it to be covid so that's that's how native speakers whenever we speak to somebody and in a global world we cannot do away with wish away such a thing where we say okay it's okay we are talking in our own among our own people why should we bother whether a native speaker understands us or not no we have become a global village now it it has almost become a global village where everybody goes everywhere our mobility has increased to such an extent that we never know where we will end up tomorrow and where we will be will be uh communicating uh, communicating with somebody who doesn't share our mother tongue which is where english comes to our rescue and we it's a, it's a common language it's a link language it's a is the language of the of the uh, of the world which which connects all of us uh, which binds all of us with common thread other other languages we may have variants we may have differences i might say that i don't know tamil you might say i don't know bengali uh, somebody might say i don't know odia but then at least when it comes to english as educated people all all professionals or teachers all of us we have at least some level where we say fine it's okay i i'm i'm fine with with speaking in english because he doesn't understand uh bengali i don't uh, understand telugu they they don't like to talk in a in their mother tongue and therefore we must talk in a language which is common to all of us so that's how native speakers uh understand they rely on the stress that we put in words or in syllables to understand a word or the meaning of a word or the sentence in a context and that helps them to understand it also affects the sounds of the vowels in the word they how how they uh, it becomes long or short and all those learners who who know where to stress are more confident in speaking and reading there have been studies there have been uh, exhaustive uh, findings that those who use stress properly word stress and where to put how to put and and how to make your uh, speech uh, fluent they are more confident more comfortable in using english than others it's a question of confidence it's a question of fluency not that those who can't speak english don't have a place in the world everybody survives everybody can can survive it's a question of how comfortable we become how confident we sound how uh, how uh, good we uh, how well we communicate with our fellow human beings 
Uh, then communicating breaks down between non-native speakers and native speakers in English if we put on uh, incorrect stress, if our sounds are not clear, if, if we don't use proper stress, if we don't use stress in the proper places. Sometimes it, it breaks, communication breaks down. They will say, okay, what, what the hell are you talking? I don't understand. I'm not able to follow you kind of thing. And that not only embarrasses, that not only makes us feel bad, that also embarrasses and maybe lead to breakdown in the in the conversation or the communication. If you if you talk of a uh, of a business deal where you are talking to somebody and the other person says I don't understand what you say uh, something like this, then people feel terrible. Uh, I must share you at this juncture one small in anecdote. This may not have relevance to to the stress I am talking about right now, but then yes, uh, it, it talks about how people are sensitive to a language, how people are sensitive to, to their culture. Uh, years ago, I, I think it was about 100, and, 100 odd years ago, uh, uh, J.R.T. Tata, Ratan Tata's uh, father, I believe, uh, J.R.T. Tata uh, with one of the British friends uh, were, were going to attend, a, were going to uh, see a concert in a, in a hotel in Bombay. And uh, outside the hotel, they had written, uh, Indians and dogs are not allowed. Indians and dogs are not allowed. And in fact, he was not allowed in because he was Indian. Uh, uh, JRD was was asked to go back. He felt so humiliated that he he promised there that he, he took a decision that he would build a hotel all by himself and will not allow Britishers to uh, Britishers into the hotel. And a, a few years later. We have the iconic Taj now standing uh, near the gateway of India, near Bombay, in Bombay. <coughs> he got it built and there he, he had a plaque written there, plaque there, wherein it was written, uh, Britons and cats are not allowed. English and cats are not allowed. So that's it. You, you, you need to pay somebody at the same uh, coin, pay back with the same coin. That's what he did. Now that's a, that's a culture sensitive thing. Because somebody said that you are Indian or you you don't know English or you're, you have black skin or non-white skin and therefore we will not allow you. He also said, fine, we will not allow you in into our hotel because you don't speak our language, because you are not a part of our culture, cultural ethos, or because you, you have white skin, unlike us who have non-white skin. And that's how, that's how, that's, that's, that's cultural uh, sensitivity. It's a question of culture. So uh, <coughs> here, when we talk of uh, stress, it also matters because people people may may feel hurt or people may not get the right uh, intent, right right meaning or a right uh, purpose of a of a word, and that might break down the communication. Also, uh, once you know which syllable to stress in a word, it will be much easier to apply uh, in in context, and that will that will also make your uh, pronunciation and all those smooth, right? And then we have primary syllable, primary stress, then secondary stress. Of course, we have unstressed syllable. Those are not stressed at all. They remain as they are, and they because we don't put any stress there, they also don't affect the the quality of the sound or the aspiration of the sound of the voiceless sounds and all those. They don't impact. Uh, and and. Uh, Another maybe 10 minutes I'll take to uh, wind up the discussion and later maybe we can have some questions for another 5-10 minutes. In case we run out of time, I uh, will uh, I, I, I'll maybe respond to the questions uh, by email or WhatsApp. Okay, <clears throat> when we uh, talk of Supra segmental features. There are there are some other features also which are which are important in our communication, you know, in in, in English uh, speech. When we speak, there are there are some features like you have. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, yep. Yep. Something to say. Somebody. Somebody has, has something. Ah uh, no. All right. I'm too sorry. Ah uh, no no it's all right it's all right. Uh, I was talking of uh, rhythm. So when we talk of rhythm, it has it has tempo, it has content, it has quality. When we when we say with with something, no, that's why we say 
it has it has rhythm in it it has musical effect so when we tell something it has the accent and the rhythm that that shapes the uh, sentence or the or the string of words that we pronounce that we speak and that that makes that is affected with many factors one of them is weak forms there are there are strong forms and weak forms of the uh, of the of some words like uh, grammatical words like uh, like we have articles determiners then uh, then we have modal auxiliaries and and all those and some pronouns also and because of the because of the manner in because of the uh, feature called <coughs> weak forms they they get weak in in context in in different places when they are used and they they save time maybe or they contract the the conversation the words so let's say for instance uh, some s o m e some we we don't say that he gave me some apple we don't some apples we don't say he gave me some information he gave me some that the some s o m e becomes so we that is pronounced something like some s s o o n the m some or or maybe can also c a n can i can do it we don't say that i can do it can that can again can becomes weak and it becomes can or have we we have done that so we that have becomes v only v so we or you you have becomes you 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 got to go now it's already 6 o'clock <clears throat> now or will and shall i'll we don't say i will do that we say i'll i and then apostrophe and l that also is pronounced as i'll so we say i'll go there tomorrow we don't say i will go there tomorrow we say i'll go there tomorrow uh then then the other other aspects of uh, supra segmental features which also affect or shape our conversations or uh sentences or or connected speech uh is assimilation when they assimilate two sounds to neighboring sounds or two neighboring syllables they assimilate uh, and and some some one one part of one word one neighboring word other part of one neighboring word they do some some uh something where where in we uh, there is something like in a word like let's say hyde park h y d e hyde p a r k park so in a word like hyde park we don't say hyde park we say hyde park so there that that sound the d for instance the d sound that gets elided that gets assimilated and it becomes hyde park so or or elision again some sound gets elided some sounds get uh, they lose their lose their uh, quality and in word like left back back l e f t left and b a b s g in in a word like left back we say left back the t t again that sound that sound gets elided or uh, so what what happens is some sound not all in some cases some sounds get elided because of their neighboring sounds so some sound before some sound after because of them some changes occur and they they make the words they make those those compound words two words three words whatever are there in this case for instance in a word like hyde park h y d e hyde p a r k park in a word like hyde park it we pronounce it as hyde park so they are they are it that that the the sound gets uh, assimilated and it becomes hyde park <clears throat> last uh, slide of the uh, last unit in fact that's intonation intonation is an important thing in uh, in uh, phonetics because they uh, not only make us uh, determine what we our our will or intentions or or wishes they also uh, convey the tone convey the tone so intonation basically uh, refers uh, to melodic pattern of an orthodense in phonetics so melodic pattern so it gives us it adds melody to this uh, and and of course that that we achieve that we get 
with the change in pitch level. So we, we rise and we fall, and, and that's how it's like a cardiograph, echocardiograph, ECG, like this. It, it rises and falls, and that that adds quality to, to our speech and also adds tone and tenor to what we intend to say. So whether we are angry, whether we are surprised, whether we are we are uh, worried, whether we are we are neutral, our the tone that we use, the intonation that we use, determines and uh, gives the listener an idea of what we intend to say. Uh, so it's the way of of the pitch, where the pitch of the voice, pitch of your voice, goes up and down. And you you when you talk, when you tell something, when you uh, convey something, it the the way the manner in which it goes up and down that that tells the listener uh, the intention what we intend what we are telling what we uh, intend to convey uh, some of the primary some of the basic functions of intonation are attitudinal function attitude it tells you the attitude of the speaker what what does he mean he he is surprised he is shocked he is angry he is happy, he is calm, so that's the attitude. What's the attitude of him? When when you when your uh, child returns home late after a long game, returns home late, the mother or the father tells him curtly, loud, loudly, where, where were you all this while? What's the time by your watch now? Now they are that that tone itself with which you ask something. That itself sends the signal to the to the kid that we are angry because he turned off home late at, after seven, after eight. So otherwise, where were you? What were you doing? If you tell that, uh, that he, he doesn't bother. He say, okay, my parents are happy. Uh, they are not worried. They are not angry that I stayed away uh, until late night. I stayed away until late night without permission without permission. So that's that's attitudinal function. So second function is grammatical function. It, it tells us whether the, the type of the phrase or the or the sentence, so one type of sentence, whether it's a it's an interrogative sentence or it's a statement or it's a negative sentence. So it tells you the uh, grammatical it, it it conveys the grammatical functionality of that uh, expression. When you say uh, when you say, uh, how long have you been here? Now, that's a, that's a curious question. It's not a question, something like, uh, uh, like who, who on earth asked you to do this? It's something like, maybe you are curious to know. That is different from asking somebody, how come you are here? So maybe that's, if you are talking to your friend, you are, you are surprised, more than surprised that your friend is here. You never in the least expected him or her. But then, in case you didn't expect somebody to be there and that he happened to be there, you had asked him to go to uh, go to your native to to drop your uh, to sense to deliver some medicine, for instance, and he's still there. Then you say, "How come you are here?" Means I expected you to go by this train or this bus, and now you are still here. Why didn't you go? Meaning is different there. And the third is the discourse. Discourse is what we intend to convey, what what the what it means in that place. So when when you say something like uh, uh, whether whether it's the terminal of the uh, sentence, is expression of is it has come to the end of the your conversation or your uh, message has come to the end of the terminal terminated there or has come to the end of the conversation or whether you need to so. I I don't know uh, why we are still there. Now there it's it's terminal. You don't know. You you want to tell him that apologies. I okay okay no problem. Take care. Uh, and then <clears throat> but if you say uh, that's why we use dot 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 three dots we use ellipses to tell something that okay I want to continue this but then I don't have. Uh, but then you, if you are okay, we will talk. So that's how, that's where you say dot dot dot. That means that there is a continuity. All right. Uh, 
and uh, there are there are four ways we use international another five minutes i'll take uh, there are four kinds of intonation four types of intonation one is falling tone right falling tone is when uh, it the pitch falls from high to low another is a rising tone you from low you rise up to high there is falling as you fall and then rise again and there is rising falling you rise and then fall uh, falling tone of course <coughs> falling and rising their functions are clear in the when you when the pitch of the voice falls at the end of the sentence so falling intonation is used something like uh, in common statements common statements something like uh, covaxin we we are going to get covaxin that's a flat statement we are going to get covaxin that's a falling statement but a rising statement would be something like uh, asking a question or uh, are they going to give us free are they going to give us free that's a question you are asking so you are rising the rising the tone falling would be a statement we are going to get covaxin but are they going to give us free are they going going to give us covaxin free that's a rising tone because you were asking a question rise fall would be you you rise first and then fall uh, something like in a in an unfinished thought maybe or in a conditional uh, sentence uh, if you if you come uh, i may also come if you come i may also come now there it is a condition you rise and then fall if if you come you will get it if you work hard you will pass if you don't go there you you won't get it but rise for rise will be you fall first and the rise those things will be in uh, reluctance you express something you tell something with lot of reluctance something like uh, i wanted to come uh, but uh, covid uh, fear is there right or something like uh, he can't come he can't come uh, because railway services haven't resumed yet so there are those are little uh, reluctance or uh, yeah we will will join you for the uh, dinner uh, kind of thing so there you are you are showing reluctance you are not showing okay we'll be there by tomorrow we'll be there tomorrow morning you are not telling that you are telling yeah we'll we'll try to be there uh, i don't know i don't know whether we can come there you are showing some reluctance all right uh yes uh yes sir i i am done with my uh, presentation if there are any any issues if there are any questions we can take or uh if you don't have right now you can leave them a, with us with professor datta or me on our whatsapp or mail and we will try to respond to them i uh, thank you for your uh, for your uh, patience everybody all of you uh it was it was lovely uh, uh making a presentation to to my own uh, colleagues and peers and uh, though i don't know you personally but then i i am sure that all of us are in the same boat we we are uh, we learn from each other and uh yeah thank you thank you and uh, i i also uh, look forward to learning something from you and uh, i i trust that i did justice to whatever i had uh, promised to uh, and in the last uh, hour and a half 90 minutes or so uh, whatever presentation whatever things i thought would be relevant for us whatever things i thought would be useful to us to some extent i i did uh, try to uh, cover as much as was possible uh in case you need uh, further information we have shared them uh, shared uh, those resources with you you can uh, make use of them and uh, they they one 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 thing before we uh, close this session i i must uh, uh, share with uh, you that most of us feel uh, it's inhibitive english english or phonetics as such phonetics as such is something that we we can't uh, conquer it's a 
it's a difficult thing it's not our cup of tea we we need a a lot of knowledge and wisdom and experience to to uh, understand it or to use it no it's it's not as difficult as as you might think uh, it may not be as easy but then it's not impossible well with with our experience with our with our uh, knowledge with our with the uh, profession that we are in i am sure uh, we can we can make a difference and then this this uh, branch of knowledge phonetics to be specific uh, will not be as <coughs> daunting may not be as daunting as it uh, appears to be it's uh, it 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 will become it's a matter of time before we we get used to it and make it a part of our uh, activity and whenever we we use whenever we practice whenever we get an opportunity to speak to to put this to use we can certainly do that uh, and uh, it's a uh, learning is a lifelong process it doesn't end anywhere uh, people last uh, week i don't know whether you are aware one gentleman a retired state bank employee uh, at 64 cleared a need and joined mbbs now there is there is no need for him to to pursue a degree now he is a retired bank employee he must be getting pension and and his children are settled he can comfortably uh, while away his time rest of his time uh, till his death but then he had a passion to do something and uh, uh, he 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 did it that's it last last year we heard one gentleman uh, one one old lady 100 and 100 plus year old lady wrote a wrote some test so like learning never ends we can always uh, learn and i have also shared uh, one uh, spoken english book a link to this spoken english book is available in uh, google play and amazon i have shared the link in the group you can uh, have a look at that if you feel like uh, that will also help you learn there are lots of uh, things that we need in our daily life with regard to uh, phonetics and uh, spoken english uh, i i have put in a lot of my uh, own learning and experiential learning in that book and that that will uh, definitely help you and uh, see how much you can benefit from them uh, and benefit from that and i look forward to getting uh, uh, your inputs from the this interaction it doesn't have to be wow and and uh, great and awesome even if it's it's uh, it doesn't turn out to be good you you can still give an honest opinion telling well uh, i think it was okay you could have done something better i i learn from that and maybe try to uh, fix whatever uh, things that i uh, could not uh put to use today thank you all the best uh thank you so much sir for yeah sir thank, thank you thank you thank you so much and uh, this was the second batch in a series for the phonetics course and yeah. uh, last batch was also very successful batch and all the participant participants highly appreciated uh the you, session sir. and they all appeared for the online test and they got the certificates in time so Very tomorrow good, <laughs> it is done on time as planned it was executed <laughs> okay. and uh, yes sir i'll request all the esteemed participants for today's program uh, kindly appear for the online test and uh, i will share the link at uh, 250 10 minutes before from 3 o'clock and the link will be closed uh, sir at uh, 3 pm so that is part of the course so i'll request that is mandatory uh no mm. i request all of you please attend that and uh, the questionnaires prepared by the sir only and these all are whatever no sir spoke today and questions are made out of that so and yeah. these are very simple questions and uh, uh thank you so much and also we have planned to launch uh, a spoken english certification course and yeah. uh, mm. sir has taken the interest because a lot of people are asking for that so we'll soon launch that program if anyone is interested uh, can definitely join for that i'll circulate the link as well 
So thank you once again, sir. Wonderful session. Thank you, sir. And thank lot you. of learning for me also. I am learning more because your all <laughs> sessions. <laughs> I am thank attending you, your all sessions. Uh, thank thank you, you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank and you, thank, uh, thank you. you all the student participants. So let us uh, know go up the year. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. It was really an eye-opening session. Uh, thank so, you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Bye-bye.